2004, bought this condo, set up my computer here, and I think the first month we were here, my son was visiting. And I'd get all my news off the computer, and he was reading the Desert Sun newspaper. This is in February 2004. He'd say, Daddy, there's a, a cancer cluster uh, at La Quinta Middle School. Said, Where's that? I said, well, it's about four miles that way. And so I looked at the article, and it was really interesting because uh, it told who, what, when, how many teachers. Uh, actually, the article was about about uh, a meeting. There was the article. The title was Specialist. The specialist was a PhD epidemiologist who run the, the Desert Sierra Cancer Registry. He'd been hired by the school to come and put out the fire. The teachers were concerned about the cancer, uh, an epidemic. But the article gave enough uh, information. He said it appears that the teachers' cancer rates were not abnormally high. The one that's a perfect article, except it didn't say how big the school was. So I came running in here, I typed in the name of the school, and found out exactly how many teachers there were, what their salaries were, how much the superintendent of the school got paid. And, and in 30 seconds, I knew they, they were teachers were right. They had an epidemic. I mean, way too many cancers. So actually today, well, actually when I wrote this, there were 18 cancers and 16 teachers, and there should, shouldn't have been more than, than two or three. When I read that article, I called the newspaper and said, here's my phone number. If any of the teachers are interested in help uh, looking at this, I'll be glad to give them a hand. Because I've done, done a lot of these. I've done cancer clusters for many years. I've written up a bunch of them. And it's not that hard. It's not rocket science. Especially if you have the cooperation of the school, it's easy. Because you basically need good work histories. So I, uh, so I called the, the school and I talked to the, the Shirley Wettlinger, who was deputy superintendent. Boy, she was really abrupt. She said, well, put it in writing. So I did. I wrote a letter. I didn't hear. I, I told her basically the number of cases of cancer are too high. I'd like to just check the school out, walk through it. You know? uh, I didn't get any response to letters, emails, phone calls. In fact, I, I got called twice a week. And finally, her secretary one morning kind of whispered, saying, uh, they're never going to answer you. I said, well, thank you very much. Uh, so I wrote that day to her boss, uh, and I got an answer. She said, this is the superintendent of the schools, Doris Wilson. She said, thank you for your offer. Our investigations and findings are satisfactory. So, uh, well, we, we go home every summer, so that May we went home and say, talk to the teachers, said, look, the school's not going to help us. They told me up front they weren't going to. I said, why don't you guys go through the yearbooks and try to document uh, hire dates and ages of everybody who ever worked there from, from uh, because if we know, you've got to know that to, to do a, an accurate cluster analysis. So, so next year we came back down and in 2005, uh, I talked to uh, Lloyd Morgan, I'd met him at meetings and he was interested in helping out. So, so we got invited into the school by one of the teachers. What we found was remarkable. We, we, uh, the dirty electricity levels were off scale. So I wrote a letter to the superintendent telling her what we'd found, and uh, I got a letter from her, obviously written by their attorneys, saying, your visit was a clear violation of state law that I unlawfully trespassed. I did dangerous and destructive testing. All we did was plug in uh, outlets and set up a couple of meters to make some measurements. We jeopardized the safety of the students. There were no kids there. And <laughs> the thing that really got me, they, they invoked Homeland Security concerns. So I guess I'm a terrorist, see? So anyway, the school hired a contractor to, to measure the EM, EMF's electromagnetic fields at the school. They found everything we found. They didn't measure dirt electricity. And their report just was chapter and verse substantiation of what Morgan and I found in our, we looked at seven rooms out of the 40, but basically 
everything we found, they found. I tried to, <coughs> to, to get the public health agencies involved. I called my, I you know, worked in the business for 40 years. I knew that, I knew Ray Neutra at the California Health Department and others, and, and, and I contacted them in March 2004. I filed the NIOSH complaint, National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. And, and uh, nobody was interested in helping. Like, oh, yeah, called OSHA. But what I had the teachers do was every one of them signed a Cal OSHA complaint. Every one of them did it. And that got the health department involved because they did the work for OSHA. So NITRA came in and measured every outlet in the school for dirty electricity. And, and that was, that really turned the, that gave us what we needed. He measured it. I didn't. I couldn't get into school. I still can't go there. So there's a, a schematic of the school. We just put arrows to the rooms that a number of them were above what the, the old meter could read. Now, if Dave Stetzer makes the meter, has modified a couple for me. So instead of peaking at 2,000 units, uh, they peak at 20,000 units. I've peaked at 20,000 in hospitals <laughs> and, I, and some strip malls near cell towers. So the stuff's everywhere. It's really high level. So what we found, well, what we did it is we used public, Calif published California registry data, the incidence of cancers by age, gender, sex for Hispanic non-whites, the whole school basically were white, white gals and guys. The thing that really made the study remarkable was that one teacher had remembered and had saved all the classroom assignment rosters. So every fall when they show up at school, Jane Doe goes to room 405. So we knew every room every teacher was in every year for the study. And Neutra measured the rooms in 2006, so we knew the level of dirty electricity in the room, we knew the who was in the room and when she was in the room. So basically, uh, what we found was that uh, there were 18 cancers and 16 teachers. Uh, the incidence was about three times expected for, for everything. And uh, the probability of getting this sort of difference is vanishingly small. Here's a graph uh, looking at the total cancers versus expected. Remember that John Morgan said, it appears that the teacher's cancer rates were not abnormally high. That puts the light on that. We found melanoma, malignant melanoma of the skin, was 11 times expected, I think, based on four cases. Four cases observed to 0.36 expected. And thyroid was, had, was, about, was about that high, too. And, and polycythemia of error was high. So I, I knew from the beginning that Someday, it hasn't happened, but some of these businesses are going to be litigated. And so I had friends at the University of Pittsburgh who do this stuff all the time. And they have, they do it by computer. We did this all by hand. It wasn't that hard because it was a small set. But it was tedious, but we did it. University of Pittsburgh identif verified our findings right down to the last decimal point. So, so our calculation was proper. So the teachers are right. And in Neutra's final report, he, he admitted that the cancers were high, the dirty electricity was high, but he couldn't bring himself to make a connection. So the school district course said, there's no problem, things are healthy. So all the old teachers voted with their feet and took off, and they hired new gals to take their new, new staff, and they're still getting exposed. And the other thing that's happened is, uh, the, we've got reports of cancer in the, in the, there's three or four cancers of the thyroid and kids went to school there and, and there's one woman I know uh, I visited her a couple years ago uh, she had two melanomas uh, breast cancer and had her breast removed prophylactically and she wasn't even 30 and, and she was in one of the hot classrooms okay so uh, I got a call, I think last spring, from a, a teacher, Kim McClinton, who worked at this elementary school that's on the screen. And uh, she said, we've got a cancer epidemic in our school, too. I said, 
And she didn't tell me about the cell tower. I, I turned up at the place, I saw this thing, and I just couldn't believe it. it the base of it is 20 feet from the, the closest classroom. Right on campus. Okay. It's been there since 2005. And, and schools are just filthy with, with Wi-Fis and, and kids using laptops. and It's just a, I mean, that's why kids are taking Ritalin. Stetzer fixed the school up in, the, up, up in Wisconsin and the kids threw their pills away. Another disease that's almost certainly related to this is childhood asthma. They, they had 37 kids in that school to inhalers, used inhalers for their asthma. And once it was cleaned up, only three of them still needed it. So, and it, there's just, we could have a healthier, happier, longer lived world. And we wouldn't have to take as many pills <laughs> and, and see the shrink. Uh, and I really feel bad for the electrosensitive people because, you know, it's it's a real thing. I mean, I, I get calls every day from them and, and, and their doctors in the medical profession think they're wacko, and they're not. It's real. Stetch is electrosensitive. We we went, visited a hospital. It was we measured it for about a half hour, and it was over twenty thousand dirty electricity units. And got out to the car, and he opened his shirt, and his chest looked like like a meat pie. It was oozy, inflamed. I said, "My God, how long have you had that?" He said, "Oh, about five minutes." <laughs> no way. We, by the time we got home, you know, drove out here, it was gone. So he, he just breaks out like mad when he gets in strong fields. And he gets violently ill, too, uh, if, if he stays there. And so it's real. Uh, when I was at the school doing the, the, the elementary school, looking at the, the cancer cluster, the teacher I was working with, uh, Kim McClinton, actually, she did the study. I gave her a meter, and she came back uh, a week later with a beautiful colored map showing uh, for each classroom in the school the dirty electricity levels. And she said that one of the teachers was on the verge of quitting. She's been there not too long and, and uh, she couldn't control or teach. The kids were just unteachable. So I went over and visited the woman. And she described the problem. I said, look, at, let me measure your room. I think the outlets were all, uh, five outlets were all over 5,000 units. So I plugged in, I had five filters, so I plugged Stetcher's filters in. I got all the rooms down like to 30 or 40. Didn't tell her what to expect. So I called her a week later, and I, I said, uh, you noticed anything different? She said, oh my God, she said, it's like somebody threw a light switch. The kids are perfectly behaved. They're not jumping out of their chairs. They're teachable. So uh, there's another downside to the sturdy electricity in schools. Uh, and what are schools for? Except the, if the kids are unteachable, I, I think every school ought to have do something to, to make it make them teachable. I've measured other schools. There's a school up me up north where I, where I live. And there isn't a single room above a hundred uh, dirty electricity units. And this school here, there isn't a single room uh, below it. Anytime you're getting into an environment like this. Uh, like just being near my computer, it's generating currents in my body that are coming out from here or from the wires. And I've done that with myself. I actually can put electrodes on me and measure the currents in my body when I get near my housing light or whatever else. So uh, that's what's getting us. And, uh, the, the cure is to get back to linear loads, get rid of compact fluorescent bulbs, make sure that every device that's marketed is, is filtered properly and, and the utilities and uh, the people who make the stuff are going to kick and scream and they've got lots of money and power and uh, and they've, they've been able to, to keep this message quiet but let's get it out there get people aroused and to try to do something about it. There are things you can do I mean I, I use Stetcher's filters and like my wire, wife was really angry with me when I we had a wireless router they're terrible I wired it, ran, ran a wire over the door sill uh, out there, and she just said, that's so ugly. I said, yeah, but hey, would you rather die or have an ugly wire? I mean, that's how I feel about it.